We are here at the FIP World Congress in Buenos Aires, Argentina, here with Dr. John Hertig. He is the Associate Director of Medication Safety Advancement at Purdue University in Indianapolis, Indiana. Welcome, Dr. Hertig. Thank you. You're here today to share with us your work on novel oral anticoagulants, and specifically you've presented on the development of a risk score for major bleeding with the use of novel oral anticoagulants. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what the prescribing trends have been in your state for these particular agents? Yeah, absolutely. So when you look at the United States, there are about 2.7 to 6.1 million people with atrial fibrillation, and then another 900,000 that are impacted by venous thromboembolism. Historically, those conditions have been treated with either aspirin or warfarin, but now we're seeing a huge increase in the use of these novel oral anticoagulants, or NOACs, mm -hmm. and so it makes sense to do a little bit more research in both the benefits and risks associated with NOACs. And so what has led you to develop this risk score for the novel oral anticoagulants? Well, I think it's really important that we assess major bleed and risk of bleed when we're anticoagulating, and there are risk scores out there. Orbit, Hasblood, Atria are all scores that are used, but typically have been used with warfarin. So it's important that with NOACs, we determine whether similar risk scores are valid or whether we need to develop additional ones because of new risk factors. And so how do you plan to go about developing this risk score? Well, what we did was we took data from a major health system in Indiana. Mm -hmm. We took about two years of data from January of 2013 to about the middle of 2015, mm -hmm. and we looked at patients that were on NOACs and then looked at those patients and saw if they were readmitted within 60 days with a major bleed, mm -hmm. then compared those against a control group mm -hmm. of patients that also took NOACs but were not readmitted. We then were able to compare the two mm -hmm. to determine whether there were any independent risk factors. Great. Can you tell us what any of your major findings were? Absolutely. So there were five independent risk factors that we found in our study. Mm -hmm. White race, history or past medical history of percutaneous coronary intervention, uh, aspirin use, NSAID use, and then drink. So alcoholic drinks, more than eight drinks mm -hmm. per week, were all associated with a higher risk of bleed mm -hmm. in the NOAC group. This was interesting for two reasons. One, it did find that three of the factors, so the drinking, uh, the aspirin use, the NSAID use, that was all consistent with previous risk scores, but white race and then history of PCI or per percutaneous coronary intervention was new mm -hmm. and hadn't been looked at yet. And so I think that's an area of further study. Mm -hmm. uh, and we look forward to doing that within the next year. That's very interesting. How far away do you think the implementation of this risk score will be? It's a good question. I think we do need to validate the risk score, and that's probably another year in the making. But while we do that, we also want to integrate that risk score, the risk score into some um, clinical decision support systems mm -hmm. so that when providers prescribe one of these medications, there's an alert mm -hmm. that pops up that ranks essentially how risky what they're doing is for their patient. That way we can proactively, as pharmacists, intervene if needed with either additional education or modifying therapy. The idea is we want to be smarter before something happens to the patient. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, it's my pleasure.